Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. We're still out here at Husker Harvest Days. This is the first of us. We're outdoor recording. We are outdoors. This is like sit here, end of the day, a true happy hour. Glamping. It is. <laughs> we got our tent popped up and everything. You pop the tent? We'll see if we uh, get pitched. Popped? <laughs> this this is going to be, I think, one of the most ultimate fun shows. And I think we should play a game. Okay. Who can drink the most beer during this show? Oh, my goodness. Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Who's driving us home? <laughs> Who's driving us There's a <laughs> volunteer. <laughs> There's a volunteer. We have a peanut gallery. All right. I think we have Uber in Nebraska. <laughs> you ready? Today on the Farm for Fun show from the 2023 Husker Harvest Days at the Maya Cornheads booth. We are focusing on a first generation farmer, but he has friends here. Well, one friend. There was supposed to be friends. He does have a friend, though. He's a row crop farmer, a county corn growers president, future author, self-proclaimed BAM weather meteorologist from... Aurora, Nebraska. Please welcome Mr. Michael Bergen and Rick Nelson. Yeah! Woo! And I should have added some questionable morals for a few hours in <laughs> Barcelona. In Barcelona, <laughs> Spain. <laughs> We're going to start with that. Huh? Uh, we'll get into oh, that. We'll get right. into that. Never been there. Never been. <laughs> Never no been. No idea what you are talking about. <laughs> what is up, dudes? Not too much. Uh, great weather here out at Husker Harvest Days 2023 and um, had a, finishing up day two. It's been great weather and really good crowds this year. It is. It's, I don't think you could ask for better show weather than this. So it is It is beautiful. I love this setup. You know, normally uh, we're kind of prissy and have like a <laughs> like a stage and like out of the wind. I, and we're just roughing it here. I love it. I feel bad that I made an outline. Yeah, because it's not going to stay on the table. Yeah. Why do you need an outline for a fun show? We're just shooting shit. We we probably don't. <laughs> All right. It's a little bit of a safety net. Are we too hot there? I can My- bring you down. No. I'm pretty good, good at bringing All right, Michael. Give me the background. Who are you? What do you do? Uh, first generation farmer from uh, central Nebraska. Uh, Henderson would be my hometown. Um, and uh, row crop farmer. Uh, just going into my 18th harvest so no longer really consider myself a, a new producer but um, definitely still on the younger side um, raised corn and soybeans uh, about 85 percent of it is irrigated uh, 85 so even even though we've had a really dry summer um, very fortunate to have water here very nice rick oh i thought we were going to see how long we could go without talking to you <laughs> <laughs> thank you tanner <laughs> Uh, I grew up in a little town in southeast Kansas, Iola, Kansas. Grew up on a diversified livestock slash cow calf operation, and uh, yeah, went to school at Kansas State, mm-hmm. and uh, was in the animal health industry for a long time. And here I am today. Hey, Ma. Did you what? what? What are you giving him the hands for? Who? You? Yeah. What was that about? Uh, so I, I drink more beers. Drink, more drink a beer. <laughs> I, that's I. I got no problem. I. I think that's better than Nebraska. So now, do you live in Nebraska or Kansas? Uh, no, I don't live in Nebraska. No, <laughs> I live, we wouldn't. Li- take I live either. in Iowa. Yeah. But oh. you do more than farm. You're we're sitting at your booth right now. What is this? Correct. So, so about uh, eleven years ago, uh, a friend of mine, Justin Brook, who I had worked with in my former life, um, sent a corn head down for my dad and I to try. And we both fell in love with the corn heads. My dad actually tried to buy that corn head, but it wasn't for sale. And so we ordered one for the next season. And we that's kind of how Maya started for us. We just kind of started selling some mm-hmm. to friends and neighbors and and uh, went from there. That was 11 years ago. So I got my Correct. first head in 19. Michael, you got a head, don't you? When yeah, did you I'm, get I'm, I'm going to 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going on my fifth season with my Maya head. Okay, so he's in it. No, that's the same as me. Or about 19? Oh, yeah. four. No, you're one year longer than me. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What made you get it? You know, I think when it came down to it, uh, I was looking to go to a chopping corn head. And, um, you know, heavy residue in Nebraska is something we got to deal with with irrigated crops. And I was looking at um, chopping corn heads and 
there was a couple in the area and actually my wife's uncle was one of the first heads in nebraska right to um correct to get one and um talk to him and he goes well you're an idiot if you don't buy one so um thought i didn't want to disappoint him and um so bought a head five years ago and um it's, it's been great so you still got the same one you bought yeah original one okay so i make rick get me a new one every year Correct. <laughs> Michael takes better care of his stuff than you, Corey. <laughs> and yeah. I, might, I might add, Mike's a wide row guy. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. Wide row? Wide, like 36, wide, 38? 30, 36. So we're the few in the proud. Why? Um, you know, central Nebraska, 36 was very common with flood irrigation. And there were some guys that, that changed over to 30 and some guys that changed back and some guys that, that just stayed 36. And I think, you know, even in a no-till situation, we just have that six more inches where, where we got a little more room to plant beside. It's important. You need six. that six inches. And um, so... You got proof. Six inches. Six. It, um, six. it, it helps spread things out. Six. And, you know, there's... Uh, you can look at study after study. You're not going to... In central Nebraska, you're not going to yield more with, with narrow row corn. So hmm. just something I started with and going to stay with it for a while. And, and I'll good. say this, being an outsider... <sighs> I, I don't know that I've ever rode in a combine with a guy that's growing 36 inch corn that every acre doesn't make over 300 bushels per acre. Wow. It just, it's unbelievable. That's that, that might works. be a little bit of a I, I don't think so. <laughs> you imagine how big the ears are? What? On 36 inch rows, 300 bushel corn. Yeah. How big the ears would be? Six inches. <laughs> Extra. Right? Extra. Extra. Mm-hmm. Extra. Extra. All right. That's awesome. So they Maya makes a 38, 36 inch row. Yeah, so I think I was the second one. Uh, there were two eight row 36s that were built at the same time, came over in the same container, and uh, they um, are 15 miles apart. And then uh, I think there's been a couple more since then. But Did you guys make a 20 inch? Yeah. Yep, we do. Because that's what I was. That's why we came. Really? We were th- we were 20s from 97 to 18, and then in 19 we needed 30s and. So why did you quit the 20-inch corn? Oh, lots of reasons. Dad was ahead of his time. Then seed corn went 20-inch rows, and they went out. Okay. But really liked the equidistant spacing, closing the row, row sooner. But then we started doing fungicide, wide dropping, all that kind of stuff, and it was like it's way better to have a little more space. Okay. We needed 10 extra inches. Hmm. 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 So you didn't uh, grow up like a, a normal farm around here. Obviously, you didn't farm, but what happened? Well, how did you grow up? Um, I grew up in the town of Henderson, about a thousand people. Uh, my dad has been in the insurance business, um, specialized in crop insurance for the last twenty-five years. My mom was a college professor, uh, and um, from the time I was two, three years old, I wore cowboy boots and pushed John Deere tractors. And I guess most days I still do that. So. A um, little bit of an unusual path. I worked for farmers starting at 14 after doing a couple summers of detasseling and, and um, working in the seed production business or industry. And um, it was just something I always wanted to do. And um, went to college, and I thought I'd come home and work for my uncle who farms. And I um, guess the Lord had bigger plans for me. And uh, my senior year, I graduated from the University of Nebraska in 2006. Planted my first crop that spring, so I drove back and forth from Lincoln, which is about an mm-hmm. hour, and put my first crop in and graduated college in May, and, and then I was in it uh, full-time from there. Nice. We found out you don't just farm. You sell dirt. Dirt, <laughs> I was going to say. Like, like, kind of like Dave, but in a much you more do profitable it, you way. Much better than load Dave. by load. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I told you guys last night that uh, the best way to sell dirt is uh, by the truckload, so... I've uh, been in business. I've been in for four or five years, and actually, Rick, you've done a little bit of that too, haven't sure. you? Sure. And, um, you know, in this area, in, in Grand Island, Nebraska, um, Grand Island is a, a, literally an island. Um, and sandy. Very, very sandy. Mm-hmm. And um, so any development that goes on residential or commercial, they need foundation. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have some pasture ground about 15 miles east of here that um, my grandfather bought in the late 50s early 60s Um, back then it was crazy because the deeds weren't filed necessarily when you know it's not like today where you know you got closing and you file deeds within you know a certain amount of days so they think it maybe took three years 
um, for the deeds to get filed, but nobody really knows. Even my dad and my uncle don't know exactly what year, but 1957 and 1961, somewhere in there. And um, so we, my dad and I, we have a partnership where we sell dirt, and um, it's been been a nice little sideline business. Um, so kind so of does, been fun. Does your dad still farm? My dad has never farmed. Oh, okay. Um, I made him plant corn on his 60th birthday for the first time. And um, he, he does own um, some farm ground that I farm. Uh, he started buying ground in 1984 when my grandfather passed away. And um, so he assumed that debt and, and the real estate um, to keep my uncle going. Hmm. And because um, my uncle was uh, middle 20s at the time. And um, so that was a pretty big shakeup in our family. So your family, High didn't, interest. your family didn't do it. But then how how'd you get into the land and everything that year that you came back from college? So the first year I rented um, in 2006, I rented a quarter that my dad and my uncle bought. And my uncle had previously been farming it. Okay. And um, in my sophomore year of college, 2004, I bought a John Deere 4640 and a 7100 planter and on a farm auction. And uh, so my senior year, I was going to farm that one quarter, work for my uncle. And then the next year, the farm where my wife and, and my family and I live came up for auction or came up for sale and we bought it. And with that, we rented uh, about 400 acres. And Is there so any podcast we've ever had that didn't have auction in it? <laughs> oh Jesus! Just stroke your I, own ego. I don't think there is. I'm just saying God, it's dang. like a good career for everybody. You almost got a smile out of Tanner. On that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mister Serious Banker. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast that didn't have a banker. Yeah. Trying yeah. to figure out where where that had come there, from. There that was podcast without a farmer in it. Yeah, not here. Yeah, that, well, that was easy. <laughs> right. Well, we we should uh, do a little quick shout out to our listeners for leaving their reviews. We're going to say it's brought to you by Maya today. Thanks for the cold beers this afternoon. Definitely. Bringing us Michael, as far as that goes. Want to recognize Mr. Jay Miller. Sent us an email. Really enjoy your podcast and all the different avenues your shows take. And clearly, Dave thinks they all go down the same road to an auctioneer. That wasn't. Where's Jay from? I don't know. I didn't read. That wasn't the one you should have read. Should have been. Yeah, read the other one. That's, that's better. That's for Justin's show. Uh, I'm sure he'll enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's more up Rick, Rick's alley right there. Oh, can that's I hear it? <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll double do the uh, the review that came in on X or Twitter or however you're supposed to say it now. Twitter X. Uh, Joe Ten T. Please do more episodes like the D show. Oh, was not it. What? Oh, that one. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Look at, all these, look at all these reviews we get from TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Get Stitch, ready, Will. Stitch 2080. I f***ing love this <laughs> It is so cool. <laughs> 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 yes. Who paid him to write that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was him. He's probably. He's Stitch 2080. I mean, he does have a lot of aliases. Oh, I love that. Listeners, we, we love you. And this is, <laughs> this is already by far. I can't say that. This just not fired everybody. Up. It's just pretty fun already. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it's always fun. It was definitely yeah. fun. It's good to get a change of scenery. Yeah. So you said you just came from. Uh, you got to speak to somebody overseas. Yeah. So actually, um, Monday I was contacted on Twitter um, from a lady from Argentina, and uh, they were bringing a group of producers over, twenty producers, and touring the farm show here, and and wanted to t- uh, tour some farms in s- central Nebraska. And told them most farmers are going to be here. They're going to be in the field um, with harvest getting started. But I said I would be willing to meet them at the show. So uh, spent an hour this afternoon with 20 um, producers from Argentina. And I didn't know it was 20. You said a couple. Yeah, it was 20. How many of them were women? Uh, two. <laughs> what they look like? <laughs> Argentinian women. Argentinian women. Dark hair. Good. Kind of like Spain. Kind of like Spain. I like it. Oh, man. Sorry about that. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Got, our Got them all flustered now. Yeah. yeah. No, great dialogue with them, though. I really appreciated the conversation. I had to use the translator. Oh. Um, they understood very little English, and I understand very little Spanish. So we we're kind of on you the You needed our mic set up so you could just have it translated and come out over the speaker. Yeah. No, it was great. I had Kale Carlson there, um, uh, Lead Farms. As your talk. translator? Yeah, <laughs> with Google. And he was, like, translating acres uh, and bushels hectares? to hectares and tons so we could talk prices and um, – Stuff like that. T O N N E S tons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got a shout out to Kale too. He's been our yeah. chauffeur around the show. Yeah, he's at, he was just outside the fence watching because there's not enough room in here to watch inside the fence. <laughs> yeah, big crowd. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> he kept us up too late last night. 
Not too late, just late enough. Hey, where where, where did you guys go? I noticed you didn't invite was, me. That was Bergen's deal. He, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think um, you know, uh, just like Farm Progress, got to have a shop party, right? So we were at Kale Carlson's and um, had a. And big, the address is <coughs> had a <laughs> harvest party <laughs> once yeah. again. Where was my invite? <laughs> I think you were uh, winding down for the night. That's all right. We can make up for it tonight. <laughs> yes. I didn't even think you were in town because you weren't even here yesterday. Ooh. Where were you? Yeah, it took me a little while to get here yesterday. Why? I, <sighs> well, I sent them to, what, three different places to get local uh, yeah. brews from Nebraska. Yeah. And everywhere, so. there was oh. this salted caramel one he wanted me to pick up. And everywhere I went, guy. it was empty. And it took you Lance Brook, the godfather, is yes. just hey, shown hey. up. Yes. Oh, Lance. All right, now we got to be on our best behavior. So. Uh, yeah, everybody <laughs> yeah, straighten up. Not only do we have a banker here, we yes. have super farmer Lance here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Michael, we learned last night, too, that you have uh, you coach track. Yeah, so I uh, finished up my ninth year this last spring. Um, ran track from the time I was a little kid. Uh, running's always came very very natural and very Running easy from to the me cops. <laughs> and I uh, had some of that in college too so um ran aau or or um whatever the youth stuff is um did you ever go to hershey's the hershey's yeah yeah went to went to hershey he's an ultra marathoner actually yeah so what's that um, like 100 miles yeah I've ran, fact. I've, yeah i've ran two 100 mile races okay so Actually, it's not like you just ran 100 miles. Like, you had to do that in one race. Did you have to yeah. train for that? Yeah, one I did. race? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we're good. And you're still alive? Yeah. Twice. He's Why? died. He's died twice. Did you do it in a desert? No, I did it. Well, it was close. A desert. It was in Kansas. So. Oh. How long does that take? So the first one took 26 hours, 51 minutes. And then the second one I did in 23 hours and 20 minutes, something like that. So huh. 24 that hours. Is and you run the whole time? I, yeah, running's a loose term when it comes to ultra marathon because obviously you got to eat, you got to you got to sleep, or you don't sleep, but um, you got to go to the bathroom, you got to uh, apply uh, lube and lube. Take, lube. take care of blisters. Please and, clarify. <laughs> what so, do you lube? Yeah. Um, what you do know, you think you lose? Is that, that what Ashley? Anything you that rubs spit on it or not? Anything, that, anything that rubs together, that's normally the the lube point, right? Just like oh, a corn head, right? So, so what's the, the lube that, of you know, choice? Did you see how smooth that was? Oh, that was that was very that was smooth. very host like. Yeah. That was. What's the lube of choice? Uh, squirrel nut butter. Squ- what? I've never heard of that. Yeah, no. It, actually, it's a has deal. Rick make that? I've actually heard of nut butter. Yeah. Squirrel nut butter. Squirrel nut butter. Uh, what's it taste like? I. Uh, Never done that, but <laughs> so so running um, in in high school, um, very had a had a really good high school career, um, part of three state championships, at our high school set two state records in the. And four, you've always ran distance. Sorry, uh, you were getting four there. by four and four by eight. So those were the records. Um, so I was a 400, 800 runner. What was your fastest time in the 400? Uh, about fifty point three, fifty point four. Wow. What about That's the eight? Fast. Uh, One fifty seven. Damn. And then I, kind of a cool story, but I had offers to all D2 colleges in Nebraska, and I really wanted to go study ag, and I wanted to get to college, graduate, and get home to farm. And um, so my after my freshman year, I came home, and I was working for my uncle that summer, and I was sitting downtown Aurora on the square, and my phone rang, and I got a call, and it was the middle distance coach from the University of Nebraska. And I got I got to say it how he said. Oh yeah, but he was a he was a southern guy. And he was, was that a, Tom Osborne or no? His name was Billy <laughs> Maxwell, oh, okay. and he was down in I think Alabama, or, uh, Louisiana, um, for a while, and and he had a really really rough gruff voice. And I answered the phone. And he goes Bergen, <laughs> Wait, Bill, Billy Maxwell, <laughs> University of Nebraska. Want you to run track for me. See you in August, and hung up. <laughs> that was it. Well, to find out, I called my dad, and my dad's like, "Oh yeah, I talked to him for an hour and a half." So my dad's like, "Well, you need to get a physical. You need to do this. You need to report this." You know, he had all those details taken down for me, but like, I guess it was the formal call or informal call that I got from the coach. But so I ended up running um, one semester at university, and um, as not knowing that my um, not just, knowing, are we in a mini hurricane? Yeah, yeah we, we got, we got I a hear dur- it. Duratio, I think, coming. 
Um, not knowing I would have the opportunity after I'd kind of given up on my dream of running, um, coming out of high school, um, you know, I took the opportunity and I just said, I'm going to do it as long as God tells me, um, you know, it's something I should do. And, um, right before Christmas, I tore my hamstring in two oh, oh. and, uh, crashed and burned on the indoor track doing two hundreds. Um, he was running 200 practice, 200 practice. miles an hour crashes and two. burns. Yeah. I mm-hmm. just kept so, running, running. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's some of it. Um, but anyway, so then afterwards, didn't run for a long time. Then I ran my first half marathon. And after you run a half marathon, then you, what's next? So yeah. then you run a marathon. And then after a marathon, most people quit. <laughs> and I was just stupid enough to say, well, the next thing would be a 50-miler. So then I did a 50-miler. And then from there, I had crewed and paced some people um, in 100-mile races. A good friend of mine from lives in Texas now. Um and paced him out at the Leadville 100, which is one of the biggest uh, ultra races there is, and um, all over 10,000 feet. Crewed and paced him out there, and uh, ran two 100s. And then I ran. I had knee surgery from uh, tore my meniscus from kicking my dog. <laughs> and um, what happened to the dog? Pete is all over the us dog. Is, the dog is fine, by the way. <laughs> no, no animals were hurt in the kicking of the dog. <laughs> um, but um, ran a 100k. Um, for you Americans at 62 miles. And uh, that was down in Kansas. And then from there, 2018, I kind of said I was retired from ultra running. I still do run today, but it, it's not the same. Um, the body's wearing down. So. Do, do you hear that, though? He paced somebody else for a race. So somebody couldn't keep the pace, or at least you helped them get their 100-miler done. Yes. Yeah, I think I've been a part of pacing three or four hundred milers. So how um, long do you pace them for? Is it 10 miles? Do you come back into it? Do yeah, you have to have I, a rabbit in your backpack? No, <laughs> okay. no, but you do have fireball. That's the requirement in ultra running is, is that you have fireball. fireball. So Really? Um, no, I, anywhere from, uh, I think the shortest I've ever done is, is 12 or 13 miles, and the longest I've done is 50 miles pacing. So, I, hey, thank you. I just... What I'm yeah, not getting is you said you had a dream of running. Yeah. Why? I had a dream. I'd still, like, why, what, what is the ultimate no. goal? Dave, Dave like, won't break I, I get when someone says, I had a dream of playing football. He dreamed of Dave going to the NFL. High noon. I got some really good um, beer from Lazy Horse, Nebraska, Ohio. Did, um, it was on the left side. Did Corey Hilbo try one yet? Yeah. This is brewed with local corn beer. Nebraska Light, and uh, we'll give a shout out. I'll to try you. one of those. I've next. got I've got a blueberry wheat over here. I got that's a blueberry pretty wheat. good. You yeah. like it, there, banker? I like the blueberry wheat, and I also like the vanilla cream that I had. Dave's losing the yeah, contest. Yeah, so just tell the you that right son, now. Son <laughs> of he's got a drink home, drinking man. White Claw. Son, of, son of a beast from <laughs> Kincader is fantastic. Oh, she took it. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so your your running just is intriguing, right? Because it's. I don't asinine. I, I, I mean, I don't get the dream. I've done five Ks, right? I've I've done a ten K, but. That was stupid. Dude, that's six miles. It's just a goal. It was stupid Completed to begin it. with. Yeah, I, you know, for me, ultra running and running in general has always been about how far can I push my body. Were you so, ultra skinny? Uh, it was ultra skinnier than I am now. I <laughs> okay, mean, fair like, enough. I mean, when you run 50 to 80 miles a week, I mean, you're, you're packing on. I actually hired a, a dietitian, um, registered dietitian, to help me because I found out I was only eating like 1,500 calories a day. But I was burning like six thousand running. Whoa! And deficit. so you can't you can't be a deficit um, and keep going. So um, actually hired this gal, um, and um, she was awesome and got me on the right stuff and and um, so it was awesome. I she's worked with uh, everybody in prof- every professional sport: hockey, baseball, football, basketball, uh, collegiate sports. She's worked with the University of Nebraska volleyball team. But I was her first ultra runner, so um, that was kind of cool. But so you ever go ahead? No, you go ahead, Tan. No, I'm gonna okay. completely change that, it. Um, well, so oh, am I. Actually, I'm gonna change it completely first because I'm kind of over this. I, I still want to go. <laughs> it's with, fascinating. I want to know if you got a high. Is the running high, runner high? Yeah. So you know the it it definitely is. I mean, it, and it's weird because when you're so tired from running for 24 to 27 hours, but that satisfaction when you're done and you accomplish a goal. I mean. It, I mean, I get it when I pull out of a cornfield or the last cornfield <coughs> of the year, too. Yeah. You know? What are you laughing at? <laughs> or just, was it words I said? Words I mean, ma- or words do you matter. just go buy gummies now and you don't have to run 100 miles? You, you, you could. <laughs> it, that, that's a different high. But, um, <laughs> that, you know, I, I guess I was growing up different strokes for different folks, right? 
That's right. But my favorite fact of Michael Burian is that he's a Mennonite. And I just think that's so cool. You know, it, I asked a, about that. Is I a gave or him was a, a? Is. Is. So I think this is the first Mennonite we've ever had on the podcast. And and I, you know, there, there's it. a lot of Mennonites in Iowa. Come and on. You, you, you know, hit the beer? No, they're Amish. Yeah. So I mean, you can uh, use a cell phone? Yeah. And <laughs> I drive a car. And I do drive a car with steel a, wheels. So. A geo wall? A geo watch on yeah. Can you be married? Yeah, I am married. How many to wives? A woman. Is, is she a Mennonite? Just is one it? wife. <laughs> is it Mennonites that have multiple wives? Yes. <laughs> no, that's Mormon. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you guys are mixing well, up. that sucks. We're just one degree off of Lutheran. What? Lutheran. No way. Like yeah. Missouri Senate what? Lutheran. What? Does, your, like, <laughs> does your wife bake good, though? No way. Does she bake good? Yeah. Kale's she, wife yeah. bakes good. Is she Those brownies cake? last Dude, night. Dude, my wife, she makes homemade pies. She makes all the traditional Mennonite food. It was kind of funny. We were at, was your wife Mennonite, Mennonite also? Yeah. So she grew up in the same church I well, did. Were you appointed was it a, to marry her? Was it a arranged yeah, marriage? Yeah, it was. She was 12. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah, no. No, it was by you choice. You make your own clothes? Uh, no. We, well, yeah, I do. I got Bernie Farms clothes. Oh, but. yeah. And she sewed these koozies. <laughs> yeah. That is hand sewn. Can you use zippers? <laughs> yes, oh, zippers <laughs> and buttons. The three Mennonite listeners that we have, we no longer have. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel knows. <laughs> Oh, so I, so <laughs> is Mennonite a lifestyle or is Mennonite a religion? It's it's a denomination. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Did you that? grow up Mennonite? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you didn't like, just become Mennonite. No. Hmm. Do people and become Mennonite? Could I become still Mennonite? Are? Yeah. 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 So what do I have to do? Um, it's a good question. Be, be a member of a Mennonite church. Where is that? We have three. We had three of them in, in Henderson. We're, we're, we have one now. The other two in town are non-denominational now. So there's yeah. a lot of churches going to that. Yeah. Just like we don't care. Just come yeah, on, come I, on, I th- come on. I, come think, on. I think it's just to, to um, you know, be more inclusive to to other people that move in. So. Yeah. Because legit, you you look. You don't have like a. You're not like dressed like an Amish or Hutterite. No, I'm not an Amish. Tr- traditional, or right? So like, I'm Mennonite. you're like in the middle somehow. Like, <laughs> right? like I mean, not either of those. They get lumped together, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I literally. I mean, if you want to go into the theology, I mean, Martin Luther nailed the 96 thesis on the Catholic Church door, and there were two things that a guy named Menno Simons didn't agree with Martin Luther on. So he's the Mennonite guy. Yeah. Okay. So Men- Men- Didn't Simons Martin is- Luther leave the Catholic Church? Yeah. So you're, just became- like, you're like four degrees off a of Catholic then. Two. Uh, two, two at least. <laughs> hey, do you guys bow a lot at church? He's the we, we do not. We okay. don't. Ba- we don't bow. The, the, the only time we kneel would be uh, for um, baptism. Do you have a rosary? Or not communion. No. Okay. Is church longer than an hour? One hour. Do you go to church? I, every week. Good deal. You don't kneel at communion. Do you go more than no. one day a week? No. Is it beer at communion or just one? Uh, grape juice. Who drinks Ooh. beer at communion? I don't know. I never so heard of it. So, like Welch's? If we wanted to be four <laughs> steps removed from Catholic, we're going to have beer at communion. Catholics? Catholics drink, probably drink a lot, yeah. though. Like clear they, beer? They got or? fish fries. Ooh. Do you get fish fries? No, no. And and that's a good thing. I always say a good thing <laughs> I'm not Catholic because I would have starved to death because I'm a beef eater. So I don't. Do fish. Dude, I love a good Catholic fish fry, though. Especially when they throw the shrimp in. Catholics can't eat beef fry. <laughs> yeah, no. Not on Fridays. No, just Mennonites. <laughs> not on Fridays. Not on Friday. No, no. Or, what a, hey, do you guys take like, Lent, a, maybe. like a commercial break so we can take a leak? We or? do. We <laughs> can. No, you just get up and go. <laughs> oh, okay. What if I miss something good? You will. I mean, we could just put Snark in here to talk for two minutes. <laughs> while you, <laughs> two minutes. <laughs> you'll be... You'll be uh-huh. We're about to lose all this. Oh, oh man. Yeah. What? Uh-oh. 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 You just lost control, boys. <laughs> hey, we got this go. I I heard my name. Are you what? Uh, well, he had, he they need a had well, we were wondering if you were going to leave anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking all of our beer. No. no. <laughs> this, is Mennonite, this is Mennonite beer. Hey, that's called Snark After Dark. <laughs> hey, drink favorite. faster. All well, right. Well, so we, Snark After Dark. We got to get Rick back into the game here. We talked a lot about Michael, but... Uh, Rick's feeling left out, so I can just see. No, 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 I'm good. I en- I enjoy folks. He said he Michael. went to Spain. I'd, I'd love to hear. Let's let's <laughs> why. Play, let's play know. a word association okay. game. Okay. Okay. Then we'll get. Ooh, this so sounds weird. Word association. We'll say one word. You got to say what comes first thing to your mind, and it can be more than one word in your response. Okay? Well, I thought it was word association, not words. What was the name of that? <laughs> the axe. You remember what that was? Area. Spain. Cornheads. 
tapas. Tapas. That's uh, appetizers, right? It is. Yeah, which tapas uh, is a very is that what we do these days? Like we just do this. We throw them at burning. It'll make yeah. a it'll <laughs> make a good uh, graphic going at the camera. That <laughs> means bring us more beer. <laughs> Who's beer gonna win lady? the contest? How are yeah. you gonna how are you gonna keep track? No tapas are they can be a meal, they can be an appetizer, they like literally the whole menu is tapas, and then you decide day four and a half you're tired of tapas. You're so you tired of sharing else. with people. Like get your fingers like, off my plate. This is like ten o'clock at night, right? Yeah, it's super late, and it. If you don't, um, if you don't drink wine in Spain, somebody th- thinks that you're not from Spain. <laughs> and I'm not a wine drinker, but this? they're they're it's, they're they're wine. He's really just good. trying to say that Mennonites drink more than Catholics. Well, I'm proving that. <laughs> okay, so, I agree. I agree. so that was good. So I, I uh, my wife and I got to go to Madrid for a couple of days on the front end and back end of a trip to Morocco. Did you get pickpocketed? We did not, but it was it was one of those things that. We were super conscious of it, right? We were sitting there. You know, and being per- a banker, you're risk averse. Yes, so. we were. But we had a great experience. It was really fun. That was actually the first viral TikTok that I had. He had one of those new had. fanny packs that he went to school <coughs> with that goes it's across shoulder shoulder. It's a shoulder oh, bag. Uh, it's, it's, it's a merch. It's, it's a satchel. satchel. It's, it's a merch. Bag. It's a satchel. <laughs> he had one of those. We need Maya One Brandon that goes ones. under your shirt, mm. you know? Yes, my uh, <laughs> those things never We could wear those. passport in it. Every podcast. We're an old school fanny pack. Oh, I like it. That'd be good. We had a great time. We had a so my the first viral TikTok I ever had was a street performer that was a military man. You put the money in his hat and then he twirled his gun and pointed it at and tipped his hat at a girl. And that was that's what it took. Did he shoot at you? No. It was oh. pretty pretty anticlimactic. Okay. All right, here's it's Morocco. That's like what country's that in? What number Morocco. was it? Twenty nine, twenty three? Twenty three. Twenty three. Arena twenty three. Ooh. Hmm. I've been there. I ain't been there. Um, which one was that, Mike? You go first. <sighs> I, I don't – honestly, this is a deep subject. I don't know where to start and stop and finish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, growing up in a small town, Nebraska, Mennonite, obviously, um, it was a eye-opening culture experience for me. And um, it uh, was interesting. Hmm. Um, my first time seeing drag queens sing. That sing. one was really good. They, and, and I told you guys this. Like, I had appreciation for it. She like, had I, raw talent. <laughs> she. Raw. They, raw. They, she. they had they. raw talent. We, we didn't check the pronouns. True. So the crazy, th- oh, sorry. the crazy thing about Spain, though, was w- when the last day we were in Barcelona getting ready to fly home is when it was. Oh, that was the time you thought you got roofied. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that was the time. That was a few but hours. That was also morals. when um, <clears throat> COVID hit. And my wife called, and we were in the hotel in Barcelona, and she said, turn on the news. So I turned on CNN. That was only news in English. And they said this coronavirus, or uh, Wuhan, you Wuhan. Guys, Wuhan virus. You guys were, that's when you were there? Yeah, so it was the end of January, beginning of February t- of 2020. You guys could have bumped uglies. You were probably there. I was, Did you I was two weeks drunk? behind you. Yeah. I was two weeks behind you. We, were in, uh, we went to Morocco and got back. On uh, the last day of February, hmm. we they were basically we were two days away from O'Hare shutting down. I haven't had the incoming flights. Lazy horse. I know. Have you tried that one? Strawberry rhubarb sour ale. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah we're going to Winchester. Where are we going tonight? I, we're going to Winchester. Winchester. I love yeah. this. This is. I don't. This so this reminds me of so Tanner. Tanner, Tanner sure. that is a um, Kincader beer brewed in Grand Island, Nebraska, called Camp Crush. What is it? A strawberry, strawberry rhubarb, rhubarb? I'm just not a sour. sour. I'm not a sour. Hey, how man. about a white peach ale, Corey? A what? A white peach ale. Here, you, I got a corn one for you. Th- those are those are terrible. That's Nebraska corn. It's better than Iowa. If it was Iowa corn, it'd probably be fine. <laughs> hey, William, cut that out. <coughs> <coughs> hey, let's, let's let's Nebraska let's sh- light. Is that like? I think we should ask Mike about the big volleyball game the oh, other day. Hold on. We're, we, still, we're, we're still doing pop. Well, we're I still, still wanting to move on. Question. I was wanting to move on. We were still doing word association. Word association. I was wanting to move on. The next, asso- the next word was going to be whole, but we'll skip that. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Arena 23. What about Twitter? <laughs> Holes. You said old? Hole. <laughs> X. 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 Go. All right. Trap shooting. Oh, hold on. I didn't get to do oh, that. I thought you both said X. I, I oh, was he didn't say Twitter. Oh. I said um, X. You said X. Tweeter. Um, Tweet. Connection. Oh, yeah. ding dong. Yeah. Argentina people. Argentina people. 
Trap shooting. Uh, love it. Dust. Yeah. Dust, because he doesn't miss. Yeah, I hosted my first clay uh, trap shooting event uh, with Hamilton County Corn Growers last week. Had 38 shooters, something I started a year ago. Been a lifelong hunter and uh, kind of gave it up and um, didn't have time to hunt and started trap shooting with some friends a year ago. Mm-hmm. And something I do with my 10 year old son. Um, it's awesome. Do men and I hunt with like a yeah, like slingshot a <laughs> or, or like a, yeah, you use a or gun? You, well, we have bows and arrows. Or a and musket. Gun. Yeah. I can't <laughs> Cupid arrows. Sorry. So do you have an over, over under or an automatic? So I actually shoot a Browning 725 or a Satori 725. It's a under single. Under so single. It, so it does have rib? the, yep, it's got the high rib. And then I have an over under barrel for doubles. And I shot doubles last Sunday for the first time. I absolutely loved it. Nice. Hmm. Dave's been getting more into it because yeah. of his kids. The yep. auctioneer yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. I could do this. One. My kid gets into it too. You shot a three hundred. D- I got one. D- Dave, how do you how do you call like do you like auctioneer when you say pole or can you do, <laughs> yeah, do, yeah. do that? Hey, now what are you gonna get? Pole. Everybody thinks you gotta say pole. You don't have to say pole. You say whatever. Let's hear it. You think it's you think it's hard shooting regular? Wait till you have to pull. He scares you. His poles are fast. It's just pole. Do it. Let's so hear like, do it. Yeah, let's do. Let's hear your chant. Let's so hear. my team shooting trap like it's pull 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 pull. Yeah. And and so you know like as a scorekeeper it's super tough because like in our ten week league this summer um, we didn't have any. This beer's warm by the way, but I think it'd be pretty good otherwise. Um, <laughs> you got to download hot clays. Come hot clays is an app. Here, but cover it, your, it, cover I haven't your had one up. I haven't had give you statistics yet, of where you're yet. missing. Yeah. Um, and there's some cool stuff out there, like Garmin's have mm-hmm. like shot trackers and stuff like that. So there's some cool things. Um, when you like break your over and under, uh, can you like catch the shells when they eject? Oh, yeah. the behind, high rib behind my back. But, okay, Ooh, I want to yeah. see that. Yeah. So do you have a do you have a rhythm that you go through every time? Uh, like I see some of the gals, they always go up, they put it on their shoulder, they get it on their cheek, then they go down, then yep. it's pull. I mean, they have like a four yep. step system. Yep. So I. So consistency and, and the same progression is really, really important in trap. And yep. you know, my best set out of 50 is 47. Um, I've shot 25 straight three times this summer. My son, he's all the way up to get his head down on that gun because he's just not quite big enough for the gun yet. And um, he shoots a, a BT-99, which is a great starter gun for a kid. Um, obviously, we're a big Browning family. But um, so, you know, s- sticking in the progression – Every single time is super important. So my rhythm every single time is the same. The mm-hmm. way I put my shells in, the way I take them out. Um, Consistency, yeah. Yeah, you, you got to stay the same. So it's like three dribbles and a back and then. Yeah, it's just like that. shooting a free throw, right? Okay. Got <laughs> it. I mean, you, you're going to do it the same time every Rick, single time. You, you played basketball? No. I was going to no. say, you're not a very big guy. You didn't no. play at K-State? No. Oh, no. Okay. No. It's certainly not K-State. Why, the other why don't you shoot skeet? I do. I mean, once in a while. <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, so our trap range is just singles and doubles. So we shoot singles, 16-yard uh, line, and then you get handicapped, and then uh, they have a double station as well. But no skeet, no. Uh, I want to make a trap shooting range in our backyard. Yeah. No, it really be super. I would buy easy. one at auction. You could get a better deal. I think we could. <laughs> you know a guy throwing all, that all out. All the there. high prices, Man, I, like so everything good. goes high. At good. Auctions. I have had a great time with auctions lately. <laughs> What'd you buy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what didn't I buy? I got a, I got a set of semi jacks that can lift sixty thousand pounds, six feet in the air. I got new, a seven eighty combine. A new wife from Russia. Seven eighty combine that's got a Ooh. Spain rotor <laughs> issue. <laughs> Is the name Luna? <laughs> <laughs> Luna. I forgot about Luna. <laughs> We're not gonna go there. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Are you gonna do one more word? One more word association. I can do this one because. It <clears throat> oh boy! Hang on. Is the word Luna? Popsicles. <laughs> Popsicles. <laughs> Popsicles. <laughs> popsicles. <laughs> you boys want some popsicles? <laughs> I'm lost. I'm, me too. They're not, <laughs> You're let's lost. not be Family Guy fans. Uh, no. <laughs> no. It doesn't even have to be Family Guy fans. Popsicle. I, did popsicle. you remember on Mennonite we don't have TVs? Yeah. They don't have TVs. What? That's right. No, no rubber. Cable. No rubber, no TV. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. All right. Don't even do that one. And it. Solid colored vehicles with no yes. FM radio. Yes. Do you have like 20 kids or just two? <laughs> I, I have just two. <laughs> okay. Twins. Twin. Twin boys. Oh, oh, so you just one and done. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. So, like 30 seconds later. So we, we were scared to death we were going to end up with twins. That's so the way the generations fit 
supposedly, you know, it skipped. My wife's got cousins that are twins, and her mom's Why are a twin. You scared? I don't know how. How do you so handle twins? Every every Mennonite I know, they have like name naming games for their kids. So like, I have a Mennonite family that it's Jarek, Jared, Jason, Justin, uh, Jim. They're all J's. Yeah. Do you have like? Do you have a name game? Spot for your on, kids? dude. <laughs> Did you do your research? Or what? <laughs> no, I didn't. But that's exactly what. Like, oh, yeah. Tell, so so my there's a whole freaking page of notes here. Dave. Yeah. I haven't even looked at it, it yet. Dave. So did, did my wife send in a biography? Or? <laughs> um, so my. Boys' names are Jacks and Jays. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, so we stayed with the Jays. Do they um, have two middle names? No, oh. only one. Not okay. Jingleheimer Schmidt or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good middle name. His name though. is fine. <laughs> but um, we decided no middle names, no family names, nothing like that. We wanted to keep them. Um, we didn't want them to rhyme, anything like that, and they're far from, from identical. So, Tanner, I could see you naming your kids like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like Addison Br- Brianna, Chase, no, Dawson. We, we've been through this. <laughs> the, like, how dry can we make it? No. Right? <laughs> the true listeners know. The true listeners know that I am Tanner. Can't be shortened. Can't be lengthened. That's just what I get called. So Tanny. I. It, okay. It can be shortened for Rick. But I so, wanted to make sure my daughters had the opportunity that if they wanted to be a lawyer and she wanted to be Gabriella, she could. If she wanted to do a. Why would Gabriella be a lawyer? Just man, if you wanted to long to use a long name, oh, or she could be Gabby is short. I want to give the yeah. options, so, so I went with a theme of long names that could be short. Yeah. So my wife, her name's Kelsey, and a lot of people call her Kels, and my name's Michael. Everybody calls me Mike, unless they meet me off Twitter, then they call me Michael. And we decided not to give our kids those formal names, informal names. Hold so on. that's what are you going to call Jax? We've got I mean, a call in caller. We've got a call right in? now. It's call not ringing, in, but it's coming in. Into my Husker, phone. You're not going to have any reception. Is it sexy, here? Rexy? Can you, can you get it over? Hello? Randy? Ooh, it's yeah. Randy, the peanut. Fan. Hello? I'm excited to talk to Randy. This is. Do you know him? <laughs> Why is he not coming through? Good, you're not coming. Th- Hold on a second. Are you Hold not plugged up. in? I'm plugged in. Technical difficulty. I'm plugged in. Oh, my gosh. Try it now. Let me put it on speaker. Hold yeah, on. turn it up. It's all technical difficulties. Turn your volume up. Randy. Turn your volume up on your deal. Take your time. There, oh, we, go. there, there we, we go. There we go. There we go. go. All right. What's who is this? Hey Corey, this is Randy. Hey Randy. How's it going? Really good, What's man. Up? Did I catch you had a good time? <laughs> Randy, you're my hero. <laughs> who, who, who said that? <laughs> uh, Rick just said Randy. You're my hero. I have your T-shirts and everything, oh, thank man. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, he's he's probably bought the most T-shirts ever from you. Did he get the limited edition tie-dye? <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. It must be new. Is that new? I could see you in tie-dye, Rick. Oh, it's, like yeah, it's it's been out for about a month or so. Oh. I like walking around farm shows with my blue Randy shirt and just the, the responses Thanks, I get. Man. <laughs> what are you up to today? <laughs> oh man, just hanging out. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. We got a, a pretty good rain yesterday, so we're not picking peanuts. No. Okay. How's the how's the peanut yield? Uh, well, we've been in a bunch of dry land fields, so so far we're not uh not kicking any field goals, but uh, hopefully once we get into some irrigated fields, you know they'll pick up. So if you're hey, not kicking any field goals. Yields. Hey, Randy, do you do you do you harvest peanuts or pick peanuts or do you dig peanuts? Well, a combination of both. First, we have to dig them out of the ground, then we wait about three to four days of good sunshine, and then we we pick them with our modest peanut pickers. Must be from Texas. No. No. No, no. no. I'm really, really struggling here in Rick. Yeah, well, that's my Mennonite friend, Mike, actually. Yeah, we do have a Mennonite friend, Mike, on here, but... We're not. We're having some technical. Di- <laughs> we're having some technical difficulties. So you're just going through the, the mic, and you're on uh, speakerphone. Okay. So what did you say, Tanner? What? Well, I don't know how it can be any worse than kicking field goals. So you're not scoring any touchdowns or nothing. Not even a safety. Uh, well, I don't follow football too close, but we probably made like the was that three point inversion. So they call it. A three point. <laughs> what? what? You don't know where you where you can run the ball in and you get three points. You don't get the full. Six. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. That's, that's right. A, that, must, that must be a Florida thing. That's a safety for three. That's right? not everywhere? Yeah. No. 
No. I watch one football game of the year, and that's the Super Bowl. That's about it. Okay. okay. Although I did, I did watch the Swamp Kings documentary on Netflix about the Florida Gators. <laughs> Why? No, Swamp Kings. Swamp, Swamp Kings. Kings. Swamp Kings. Oh. Like Judah, about Tim Judah Tebow Elizabeth. and Ir- Irv Meyer, I think his name was. Yeah. I heard. I heard so? people are disappointed it didn't include Aaron Hernandez. Was Was the Tiger King in that? <laughs> Doesn't ring a bell. Doesn't ring a bell. Rick, you got anything no. else to, to ask for Andy? You got him on the phone. I, I mean, I'm just so excited that our friend Randy was able to join us for this podcast. I want to go down to Florida and pick peanuts with him sometime. Yeah, I'll go with you. Hear, hear that? Yeah, come come on down. We'll be we'll be picking for the next month. So wow. Well, I'm busy the next month. What what town Maybe would that a little be, bit Randy? More, so. Do you need – you should plant some corn so you have to get a, a corn head. He, he needs a corn head. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, one, I think the Colombo has a picker where you can pick corn, take the header off, put a new header on, and pick peanuts with it. Okay. Well, they, they, they have a corn head made out of Spain called Maya. That's, that's Maya, what okay. Need. That's what you need. Cause he, yeah, you're, I don't really know. A whole, what's, what's a great yield of corn? What's like a record-setting bushel yield of corn? Well, like Iowa corn or Nebraska corn. Ooh. What what is the world the world record's like six hundred some bushel. Yeah. Right? I I think so. But like a typical Iowa is probably two hundred to two twenty five. And Nebraska'd be three hundred bushel every day. Nebraska, yeah. Irrigated two Everything's bigger in Nebraska. Gotcha. That's Texas. I know that. We we grew corn uh, in twenty twenty and it was a complete disaster. So we just stuck the peanuts and cotton. Now you didn't have the right it's, corn head, probably yeah. six sixteen point two. Six hundred and sixteen point two. That was that's the world record. What's Should the world Corey record peanut? Come. I'm kind of starstruck here. I can't. I don't yeah. have anything else. Is to it say. like planters peanuts? Uh, I would say. Um, you pre I them? mean, for us, three tons would be phenomenal. Three Is that tons. metric uh, tons or American record, tons? I'm not sure. Metric or American tons? So that's six thousand. American. We're in America, Corey. I'm not. Well, I, Rick. <laughs> hey. Rick likes the T O N N E S. Yeah. Yeah. That is. Who do you sell your peanuts to? Who do you sell your peanuts to? Who do I sell my peanuts Plan- to? Planters or? A, little co- a company called Birdsong. Okay. They boil the peanuts. Boil them. We need some boiled peanuts. Here, Here's the Peanut. deal, Randy. They boil everything in the south? If, if you were to buy a Maya cornhead, <laughs> you wouldn't have to get up and down the ladder all the time and trip and fall to go unplug the damn thing. Well, send me an email and I'll see if I can pick peanuts with it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. Maybe we can get Luis make some videos of picking picker. peanuts with a corn header. You know, That'd probably would, go viral. It, it would at least be go. worth a spoof. Like Randy ordered, went out on his own and ordered a, a corn head to pick peanuts. Yeah. Right, trying to save money. <laughs> <laughs> I like it already. All right. Well, Hey, thanks for taking this call. I don't blame you. Yeah, just so you know, when I Google world record peanut, it comes up with world record peanut butter eating. Ooh, I thought maybe it was a picture of Barry. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> Barry. <laughs> I miss Barry. World record peanut. <laughs> oh, Barry. All right, buddy. We're going to let you go and finish this one out, but thank, thanks for calling in. Oh, yeah, anytime. Yep, I'm always just like calling you, so y'all have a good day. All right, sounds good. Take it Sleep. easy. Bye. <laughs> good dude. <laughs> the most peanut butter eaten in one minute is 378 grams. How That's a, there's 454 grams in a pound. That's a lot. How do you know that? I just I took physical, <laughs> physical science in ninth grade. Electric science in ninth grade. Physical science. That's funny. Physical science? Mm, you never heard of that? Yes, what? I had physical science. What is that? It's exactly where you learned. Is yeah, that how physics? many grams? Like one inch science? equals 2.54 centimeters. Stuff like that. Oh. You just physically. Try to do the correlation between why we can't all be on the same measurement scale. Ah, uh, English yeah. metric. Gotcha. I don't think I had that. Well, what I had that? You, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> oh man. Bankers have calculators. He does. I do. I Tanner, do. Do you need a beer? No, I'm. I'm still sucking on my uh, strawberry rhubarb hey, sour. I, 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 someone Corey, gave me an extra one. Corey, I see you're drinking out of the manure mafia. I ran into Matt. He's here. supposed to be here today. Yeah, huh? Matt's a great guy. Is he here? I haven't seen him. I ran into him probably three, four weeks ago. Okay, Good dude. Where at? Here in Grand Night Church or Freddy's? Oh, Freddy's. <laughs> <Mennonite. laughs> Wait, we both Your got mafia's Mennonite too. We yeah. both got we both got spicy sauce. <laughs> spicy fry sauce? Yeah. Did you get a chocolate shake? No. I'm lactose intolerant. What's the deal with a Sunday or a turtle? 
What's what? the difference? A Sunday or a turtle? Is it the peanuts? Yeah, I think it's the peanuts. No, I thought it was the way they like grinded it in there or not. Right, I think it's gr- the peanuts. No, a, a blizzard is What's, when it's all mixed. It's not a blizzard at Freddy, shake. dude. It's a powder, malt powder. A shake does not have malt powder. What is malt powder? Malt powder? What is malt? The difference between a malt and a shake? It's like, like whey protein. Like milk? Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it like is. Whey protein. No, it, it is. is. It's like whey uh, protein. Mennonites don't believe in that. Yeah. <laughs> you have a milk cow. No. Oh. Well, I mean, I do. But it's got a milk goat. You do? <laughs> no, I don't. I do. <laughs> I don't know what to believe anymore. You churn your own I'm butter? lactose intolerant. I told you that. <laughs> you did? How do you grow a beard like that being lactose intolerant? How did, how did you eat protein? Like <laughs> I eat beef. Man. From Nebraska. Can you eat pork? I do eat pork. <laughs> and actually, Corey, just so Where you know. Where is the sauce? I, I get yeah, my I get he, my pork from Iowa. I get a hog every year, every winter from or late fall from a friend of mine in no, Des Moines. I heard Does about, he like fake it? I heard died? about this last night. No, no, pork. It's not even. It is pork. It's not even protein. What? Por- pork's not? <laughs> Are you <laughs> vegan? What's that? I'm not vegan. No. <laughs> it's a. Well, give us that. It's a. <laughs> hold give, on. Give us that. <laughs> She's got some sauce. We got to try this. Oh, yeah. I just stole your beer. That's fine. You can have it. Do it. All right. Well, she's getting this ready. Michael, are you excited for it harvest like or ca- not? It looks like Heinz 57. It does. It does they not. put ketchup in it. It does now not. Now you got something to put it on. Here's the deal. So, no, you don't need to put it in. Put it, put it on your finger. Yeah, Squirt it in your mouth. There you go. Oh, oh, yes. oh yes. That was great. That was not, that, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> now i got to do it again. Now i got to do it again. <laughs> was it actually it? really, really good. I, did you get my sauce on your face? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, so. I can't that is, say, it's really good. I can't here. say any words. <laughs> here, let me do it. In your face. Tanner, <laughs> come on. <laughs> hold on. In your face. <laughs> I gotta, hold on. i got to post this one so I can start a new one over. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ready? What? Oh, you're getting your own video? We're gonna, I are you going to video me videoing? Is uh, this really a video? Yeah, Alright. Oh, my oh my you go! Look at that! Oh, jeez. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> we knew that was coming. This is why I did not. <laughs> That's why I only controlled it myself. <laughs> there you go. She's got Dave, some. Dave, you in? No, not with him controlling the, the, the gun here. That is oh, really dude. good. I. It's amazing. I can, like, smell it. Here, I'll do was it this like how it looked in Barcelona? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> how Rick looked? Hey, that's like what I had on brisket last night. Yeah. I had some of that at the old Texas tea. <laughs> Where so <laughs> I've been I've been making my own barbecue <laughs> so sauce bad. for about ten, ten yeah. years, and uh, it took me three years to kind of get the recipe down. Um, you guys would puke if you know how much brown sugar is in. That's it, why I like it. In it. Mm-hmm. But um, I always tell people I don't really care if you like it. I don't make it's it for smoky. you. I make it for me. Is that yeah. liquid smoke? Yeah. Hmm. You should. Uh, I'm so sell happy that. it's in my nose and my mustache. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna. You're, you're looking hurt. pretty good. You knew that was coming. It's on your shirt. It's on the mic. <laughs> I try not to get on the equipment. Shirt might be screwed. I'm not worried about the shirt. <laughs> we'll give it away to a listener. <laughs> get an autograph by Michael. <laughs> it's on your pants too. Actually. Hey, what so I miss? W- the, <laughs> the funny part when when my kids were like four and I was making it, they always asked for my barbecue sauce and they wouldn't ever eat anything that. We bought from the store, like Famous Dave's or KC yeah. Masterpiece, whatever. And Tanner's po- got it all over his shirt, <laughs> his pants. <laughs> we reenacted what happened in Barcelona. Oh, <laughs> oh, with Lena? You were there. <laughs> in the bathroom. So, so that my, was ki- hot. my kids always called it Daddy Dip Dip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so like like we always, daddy? like my That's friends weird. would. <laughs> That's weird. And, and here's the deal. I don't sell it. Um, oh, you don't? No. It's not cur- commercially available. No. Oh. It's like the same stuff that you put on meatloaf. I bet though. you Rachel's yeah, got it. Wouldn't it be stick. great on it'd meatloaf? Be gr- it'd be good on meatloaf. Can I request it? Like a backdoor deal? Do you have any more of this loaf. beer? When I you bet come, you they, do. they got more, more Dan of that the Wiser beer. from Kin Cater. It's good. Kincater. When you come get their pork, you can bring that product. Yeah. What should I call that? Bernie though? drinks beer. Beef. Get Bernie, a beer. I get beef. From beef. <laughs> I think it's best on pork, beef, chicken. It's not very good on fish. Do I still have Do I still have anything on my face? You got it on your shirt you're you're good. right here? No, nah, you're good. Not so much, uh, not so much here, glasses, here, but right here. It is on your glasses. <laughs> it's on my glasses. It is actually on your glasses. <laughs> Some people hate, like that. Hate with, 
with glasses. Rick yeah. really reminds me of a librarian. Yeah. <laughs> We've yes. got to close this thing out. No, <laughs> we don't. Yeah. We're no. just getting started. No, we're just, <laughs> just getting started. <laughs> getting started. This is gonna be just a... getting started. Are you tired of us already? Jim? I'm not tired at all. No, <laughs> you smile. Are you gonna have us back? right then? I saw it. <laughs> no, it's just, it'll be two shows. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> Part two. <laughs> we still got seven minutes of show. So Rick, left. you're in. You're in livestock. <laughs> no, you were. When you I grew used up? to. Yeah, but he's going full time heads. Yeah, full time head. How's the head business? It's good. <laughs> Okay, yeah, why were you in Spain at this sketchy place? <laughs> yeah, so we took a few of our key customers <clears throat> there to the, to see the factory. I was so Corey's, had, you, Corey, Corey's, not, a key Corey's not a key customer. Corey's had three heads in six four heads, years. Four heads, though. Yeah, but and he's had have one you ever head negotiated anything with that guy? <laughs> I mean, he beats you down to where you don't you make a penny. You think he's a You think he's a Mennonite. No, There's no or money. Or something else. It's literally but. just... It's, That's right. That'd be another. It's easy. It's numbers. That would be another religion. How you? much yeah, for a new? So head? we're not going to go there. You could take the Bex approach. Is that what you're saying? Get a new fuel trailer. All I'm saying. Are you guys on the Bex program? We're trying. Um, Anybody we're, is on, on the Bex program. For us. Anybody. No, but they said because I took the trip and I don't. I don't sell. Bex. I took the trip, and they said they could buy anything. If you want to buy a grain bin, if you want to buy. Hey, look at this dude. My corn head. Who's that guy? That's Kel Carlson. Well, he finally got That's in here. Kel Carlson. That's man. Pushed his way to the front. Give him a, give him a mic. Did he come here to party? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. All right. We're in Spain. You took <laughs> yeah. some key customers to Spain. What yeah. is in Spain? <sighs> Luna. <laughs> Luna. I don't know what that Luna. is. Luna. <laughs> so that the the factory is in Spain. Oh yeah, the factory. Oh, that's what you were getting. Yes, at? that's what I was getting. So to. the factory is in Spain. Uh, Luis, um, who's second generation, working on bringing him back third generation. Yes. Um, his dad started the company. Um, they built he, the first ever folding corn head in the mid nineties. First ever. Yes. It, if you've that's ever been to Europe. Yeah. No. But no, they it's got a, a lot of fun of fact. Fun. Yeah. But Europe has narrow. Uh, narrow roads, so they have a lot of restrictions on the farmers mm-hmm. over there. Mm-hmm. That's why you see a lot of super singles, no duels, things like that. So they they build a lot of uh, six row folding, seven row folding, eight row folding, nine row folding things well, you've never seen in America. Here here's the crazy thing. I told Corey about this last night, but the odd rows blew my mind. Yeah, we watched an eleven row cornhead, and I showed them pictures because they're irrigation sprinklers, literally lawn sprinklers. It looks like something you bought at Lowe's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. which doesn't make any sense. Why go an odd row difference? Because it works for the spacing. Have you ever been to Europe? Yeah, but, but why like not? Didn't you go to Why not just move? I'm surprised they don't put the cornhead on the back of the combine. <laughs> Is there there said, why not just move it apart another thirty inches? Is there Mennonites in Europe? Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's where, where, where the religion started. Oh yeah. I thought it was Martin Luther. Luther. Or Do I look at Native American or? <laughs> don't miss We're alive. not going there. Don't, no. cut, don't answer cut. the question. So I always told everyone that it was because there, there was a bunch of popcorn in Spain and it always goes down. That's why you need it. No, so it's not that. Corey they they, they, what popcorn they, looks like. they started this business it's right four next years to the ago. Yeah. It's a it's a relatively what I would call small factory, family owned, and they build a few hundred corn heads a year that's all they do and it is the best corn head that we have seen and uh that's how we got involved with it um we weren't looking for something to sell looking for something to do the corn head kind of found us and they do almost all their own machining milling assembly in-house Hmm. And that's what makes them different, I think, from from everybody else. Along with the, you know, some of the design. So you things. telling me that all the other corn heads that fold copied? No, well, I wouldn't say that, but but they. But but obviously, as we get better equipment, it, it was a need and and um, was seen by the industry. But yeah, it was ninety three, ninety four. Yeah, I think yep, Louis exactly. told, told us. I. Yep. Great family, um, know Luis and Maria, and um, I would consider them good friends and an uh, unforgettable trip for me. Huh. Sure. So, I Likewise. I, I've never talked to Luis. Yeah, we, well, he I'll, was I'll here take last year. He was I'll right here in this there. booth last year. Huh. Yeah. Where were you guys? Mm. He was Luke, over at Suka up <coughs> working on the guy trying to get a better deal. No, it's the first year we've been to Husker Harvest. First year here? Well, no. welcome to Nebraska. This is. It's been a great time. Contrary to what we thought it was yeah, going to be. I, I could take it to a Nebraska volleyball game. When? Mm. Tonight? 
Uh, they played last night. They played number oh. five Stanford. Uh, Nebraska's rated number four. They beat them in four sets, so they're on a good thing. So good why is, roll right why now. Is, why is volleyball so big in Nebraska? Yeah, really. Well, well I think because, you guys used to have a good football team. Yeah, because <laughs> football's um, been a little rough lately since, you know, 1997. Uh-huh. You know, I don't fault you. I'm a big fan of volleyball. Ever since that Whatever. championship team. Which you know, one? Was that a year or two yeah. ago? Yeah. Love volleyball now. No, I, I was at the game at Memorial Stadium, 92,003 people. Um, set the world record that. for uh, female sports, all ever hmm. world record. Um, Were blue. people into that? What? Were people into that outside of those 92,003? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's still a lot of people. And then we went to a game um, where the volleyball team's plays Bob Devaney Sports Center. We went last Saturday night, and they played Long Beach State, which beat number one Texas early in the year, and uh, they swept them in three, sw- oh. three so sets. It, so. so is it all females, or is it male volleyball? No, this is female volleyball. We believe in Title IX here in Nebraska. <laughs> How uh, Whatever happened to Eric Crouch? He uh, is carrying around his Heisman Trophy um, after his stellar career in the NFL. Did is he, he actually, the quarterback? Did he go to the NFL? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a talk about NFL. NFL. I'm a big fan of the Wisconsin volleyball team. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh, oh, oh okay. Okay. I see what you did. That is Badgers? <laughs> that is the official wrap-up of this episode. <laughs> did, did you call them the Badgers? Badgers. <laughs> the The <laughs> Wisconsin <laughs> Badgers. We, we are going to go straight I'll into go the, the payoff question. <laughs> Ooh. We're not done yet. Yeah, we are, we're we still going. Done. Tanner, <laughs> go away. Go we're having fun. <laughs> I could do this for hours. I could too. I could. I <laughs> enjoy this. They Michael Burgess. They probably won't have us back. It's all right. What do you mean we won't have your bag? This has been the. Uh, we have to pay next time, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't pay this time. I didn't. I know. <laughs> you get one free. Get one free, dude. Yeah. How about him calling up my hero, the peanut farmer? No, he called me. That was no, cool. he called oh. me. He just out of the blue. What's going yeah. on? No, I yeah. coming call. Let's hey, we're gonna go down there and like harvest peanuts and Still, kill alligators. I told him that we like later this <laughs> afternoon. I texted him this morning that we're gonna be on with one of his biggest fans, Thank and he you. knows how much like, he's because he's Zach Johnson's biggest fan. Okay, so he knows how important it is. So he called up. That's that's really cool. Snarkosaurus is a pretty. What big do you got fan. to say, Snark? Where's the mic? Come on, Mike. Not me, Mike. My name is Snarkosaurus. I'm here to party. Hi. Oh, I, I came to the mic. Maya Cornheads. I met Kenny. <laughs> right? See. Si. Kenny si. Nielsen. Rick Nielsen. <laughs> Ricky Nielsen. It doesn't matter. Listen, great time. Glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, we didn't hey, actually invite you. You just showed up. That's fair, but I actually know everybody <laughs> in Southeast Kansas, and matter, everybody right? here is an agent. Hey, you're here now. Yeah. Plug, hey. plug GFY. Yeah. How hey, much you up no, this year? What fine. does GFY stand for? It by stands the way. for Go Farm Yourself. So, farm for profit, or you won't be farming very long. That's yeah, right. that's true. Right? That's right. If that's you don't it. farm for profit, you can't buy a Maya head. That's a hundred percent correct. Yep. I tried to buy one, but they won't let me drive it through Des Moines, (laughs) unfortunately. Why? Do you know anybody in Des Moines that will let you drive it through? Uh, I know a couple people. Okay. Have you ever seen the Bushlight Combine? Snark has ran the Bushlight Combine with a Maya head on it. Oh, Oh, that's why the row units got bent and stuff. Well, (laughs) maybe. Well, they're like (laughs) ease up on the throttle. That's hard on resale value. Hey, Rick, you know that three-year warranty? Oh, yeah. I just saw more bushels faster, so jam it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. uh, Straight to the top. Agent 48's. Seriously, how'd like you been nine out bottle. of eight row units? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that must be how it happened. I didn't know what I was doing. I literally just pushed the throttle down. The, it's, it's full bunny, right? Full bunny. It's a hydra, it's a hydra full thing full out, bunny. circle button, auger out, and drop the, the gold ball. nuggets gold into nuggets. a wheelbarrow. Gold, gold nuggets. nuggets. Then put them in a cauldron. You're Run a modern day the leprechaun if you have a Maya corn head. Yes. <laughs> Snark, you want to end on the, on the payoff question? Yes. 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 What? It. The payoff question is, what do you enjoy most about working with farmers? Uh, they're salt of the earth. I mean, it's, a, it's literally the only thing that keeps America together. Yeah. Right? I mean, you destroy a family farm, you destroy America. And I'm pro-America, and I'm a business owner, just like farmers. It's real simple. Good answer. Yeah. 
Dude, uh, that's Mike for drop. real. Mike drop. president. <laughs> Mike drop. That's good. What about you two? <laughs> what, uh, Michael, you obviously are a farmer yourself, but uh, what do you enjoy most about working with farmers? Because we didn't even get into your board leadership and your community involvement and all your philanthropical parts of this, but you work with a lot of farmers. We important things to talk about. We're not got, done yet, Tanner. Yeah, Why are you yeah, rushing off? You know, <laughs> you, had to pee, you had to pee an hour ago. How have you not It was yet? five minutes ago. <laughs> he missed. He was peeing when he, when you got... Uh, when you got douche with face, sauce. You got sauce. Yeah, sauce. you got sauce. I missed it. Luna. Luna, Luna sauce. Luna sauce. <laughs> um, you know, the best thing I like about working with farmers from my standpoint being president of a local association with Nebraska corn growers is you know providing opportunity for them and um, giving them education um, things we do every year um, you know we we provide tours so we prover- provided the NK uh, Syngenta production facility that we'll drive by tonight on our way to dinner um, we toured that we've toured the ethanol plant we provide educational uh, opportunities for our growers, and, and I think not only that, but I tell them, if, if you join Nebraska Corn Growers, I can advocate on your behalf. You don't have to go to Washington. I will do it on your behalf. It's not a trip. My trip to Washington last year to meet with elected officials was far from a trip. It was a lot of work, and um, it's something I do take seriously, and I think coming from the outside a little bit, um, even though I've been in involved in egg and my family's been in egg i'm just a little bit on the outside and um to be able to give back and and talk for those farmers um i think has been a been probably the best thing so that's what i like about How, working with farmers that was a really polished answer i like that. how yeah, long does it that. take you to get to washington dc in a horse and buggy <laughs> <laughs> so about as long as like what 1960 when they drove tractors there probably like i don't Oregon know Trail we, got big, we got big horses here have you seen them they, they run Nebraska fast corn. <laughs> rick your answer who what was the question again what, what do you like, like working most? with farmers oh man i don't know he where to like start doesn't like with that no I he hates um farmers. no i Only i love you. farmers <laughs> um Agriculture, to me, it, it is uh, kind of like Snarkasaurus said. It's the, it's it's what everything keeps America going. And uh, I don't know, people buy from people. I've always felt like, and I just it isn't just like Corey, for example. I didn't know Corey. He bought our corn head, became a friend, and I think if I can uh, become a friend, a partner with these people, provide them something better. Um, and, and farmers are genuine. Farmers are real. He's going to start tearing oh, up. Oh. I, hang on. Oh. I'm you, Tanner. You know, you know and, so. and, and, and I'll go along with Rick there. I think the Maya guys, the, the ownership of Maya um, with Justin, Lance, and Rick, they're, they're farmers themselves, and farmers like to buy from farmers. They like that. And, you know, I spent the morning here at the booth. I don't get paid. I don't get Who's anything from us? them. And, but I love talking to other farmers about my experiences of being in year five with my corn head and what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And, right. um, so we had some good conversations with some local people and, and people here at the show. And I think that's, you know, it, that's what makes the world go around. Sure. So you've had a head a lot longer than me. So I, like I said, I'm kind of trading through and that well, wasn't my plan, that's, but we had a derecha and then other people needed that head and all that. Have you had to replace any parts? So I had one gearbox go out. It was kind of a freak deal. It was his oh, fault. Wow. It was probably my fault. I don't really know. I wasn't in the combine. Probably, he ran into a buggy. No. Um, <laughs> Steel wheel. Yeah. Uh, Oregon Trail. Have you ever seen a you ever seen a seven hundred series John Deere combine on steel wheels? It's pretty impressive. I've seen come some. Uh, I wanted to say eight Rs, but it was like an eighty four twenty on steel wheels yeah. up in Northern Iowa. Pretty, um, pretty badass. But you know I. I otherwise yearly maintenance. I mean, it, it's so easy. I mean, maybe through the middle of the year we'll grease it, uh, flip the chopper blades. I mean, I I love the chopper blades. I can replace on all eight rows on my corn head. I can replace the blades for under two hundred bucks. And oh, Rick uh, told me it's six hundred. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. I do get I do get a special. Yeah. I'm sorry. He I only has wow. he only has it's eight a Mennonite rows. discount. Yeah, he yeah. only has eight rows. It, and it's all things I can do myself. I, and I really look at Luis as he's designing corn heads for farmers, and he understands. Luis has been on my farm um, in 2019, 
I, yeah. I don't remember exactly. We drove around and looked at things. Yeah, and he, he came out to my farm. and It was um, cold. You know, oh, he, so cold. he wants to know what do farmers want, what do they need, and, and what are they looking. And, you know, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not an electrician. I'm not a, a lot of different things that I do on the farm. But to be able to partner and, you know, with those people, but Luis makes a head that farmers can work on. And oh. I think that's the number one thing that, that I like about him. Um, you know, Corey, I think with what you went through with the Duratio – was a testament to Maya, oh, yeah. and um, cheap insurance yeah. policy. Yeah, you know I got the in in snoot um, gathering chains that that run on them. I, I don't know anybody else. Everybody else has got a, like a roller system. Central uh, row unit is that what you call it? What do you call it? That well, we call the outside one the lateral side chains. Okay. Okay. What's and then the central row unit. We need to come up with a funner name. I agree. Funner, I think it's a, a shark name. fin not a, gathering not a more chain. fun name. Just more a fun. Funner name. Shark fin gathering funner. chain. Yeah. You mean the middle slit thing? Yeah. The slit. What, what would you call that, Dave? You don't know anything about this. What, what hey, now, what are you going to give? <laughs> <laughs> what would you call a gathering chain that goes down the middle of today. a row unit? These guys want one. These guys right here. They let's, got... let's auction this 16 row off today. There we go. <laughs> let's start at 200000 now. We can do it. What are you going to give? You have to You have to do, do the it. description. Let's saying hear it. I haven't heard yeah, the auction. Yeah, he's got the middle need, slit. I like the full, like, Maya Cornhead. That's 16 a row, folding, <laughs> chopping, Maya Cornhead. Let's go. Let's it, let Dave roll a little five bit. Five sensor, <laughs> auto level, start, two cent steering. What are you going to give? Start at 50,000. I'll take it for that. I'll start a bit. Do it. 50. Yep. Is yep. that going to be 60? Yep. I'm 50 here to hey, look at her, and here to her, and 60,000, yep. 70,000, 80,000, dollars. Yeah, come on now, yeah. 90,000, dollar, 100 grand. I'm 100 here to, that's worth that, yeah, come on. I'm here to 110, 120, 30, 40, 50, 60. I'm 100 down, 60 here to 70,000, dollar, and how can it be? 80, but 80, but 80, but 80. Yep, yep, he's in, he's in. I'm 190,000, dollar. Oh, better not get in and get going. I got 180, 90. It's all pretty ready to go. I'm 180, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 200, 200, 250, 250, 200, 200, give 199, I'll do that, that one time, got you in, 199, not going to be two, uh, so 199, one, knocked it off, <laughs> <laughs> that's how Corey wants me to sell the farm ground, knock it off, Dave, quick, quick, yeah. knock it off, Just I thought kidding. we were friends, <laughs> shut it off, shut it he off, he about sold some ground last week for five grand, man, it was dangerous, and I asked you? Per no. load? It was just crap. No. Crap. Hey, when those trucks roll out of my I had uh, the bid. Ground, I, Man. We could all, and then we he just kept going. We could. Where are we at? So who bought it? What we got going on here? Who bought the Where farm? We at? We're at a minute, se- or an hour What's the interest rate on worry that? About 16? It. Yeah, an hour 16? Oh, you need to relax. Fall out of my chair. Oh, my god. He's so worried about that. Farm for profit. Tuka, Tuka, with the Tuka. the banker guy. Well, just, but you know what? When you when you own a Maya Cornet, you don't farm for profit. You farm for fun. There you go. See. Holy smokes! If we will know if William listened till the entire end of this episode because <laughs> he just William. found right. he just found the opening clear. You, you know, we're gonna do Justin tomorrow. We could just like oh, even out. Gonna doing that sounds hot, right? That's like, like we're arena, gonna do Justin. Like just arena. do twenty yeah. minutes with Justin. <laughs> Is that arena twenty nine? Twenty three. Twenty three. Twenty nine. They they stayed a lot longer than I did. I left. Shit got really. <laughs> you, did not. Not. Yes, you were I there. Did. Was gone. You were there. I, dude, you s- I don't even want to tell you. What you happened. went to. Did you go to? The not live. Can we edit this? Do you have do you have evidence of this? Can we edit this? Well, I mean, yeah. I have pictures. All right, let's. Uh, we should end on that, yeah. Tanner, yeah. the banker. This is absolutely Shit's getting weird. the best ending. <laughs> and who won the beer account? You threw all yours away. What did you do here? I think I won. No, we threw him at that snark Ooh. guy. I'm an ultra beer drinker. I think Michael got we you. Need a, He's we drinking need twisted tea, though. He may have. Does that count? Well, it's like tea 5%. Twisted. twisted tea tastes terrible. It's, it's not. It's good between 8 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock at night and 8 o'clock at night and 8 o'clock like in the morning. I like Long Island iced tea. It's the I'll same take, thing. All right, Michael. I didn't even know men could people, drink that. People, I'd have taken that. I'd have taken that. Hey, let's keep I, with Tanner and see how long we can make this go. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Steer? Come along, deal. Is that right? Hey, what are interest rates going to do? <laughs> he doesn't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking the <laughs> Headphones are off. <laughs> do bankers make more money with high interest rates? <laughs> no, they won't let him get. They won't let him loan any money. Yeah, well, right. Does he, he doesn't have any money to loan. He sold money. all the money. If you farm sold in Nebraska, you operate on cash. So. Yeah, that's a deal. Oh. That's a load of crap. But they have a terrible football team. In case you guys didn't know, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, either farm on cash, farm but, on cash, or have a good yeah. football team. Do you guys right? know they had the largest attendance at a volleyball game? Yeah, we. Yeah, I think okay. we've heard. A couple I times. think we talked about that. <laughs> 
Do you have to pay road tax how as do a Mennonite? How do people... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey, no, I drive you, in the ditch. I drive in the ditch. <laughs> you guys, do you know how to watch good Nebraska football? Really this is the oldest joke of all TV, time. Right? No, you got to pull out your VCR. <laughs> oh, that is good. That's old. Half of our listeners don't, want, don't know, even know what a VCR, <laughs> a VCR is. is. Mm. We just made everybody mad. My, oh, we made fun of Mennonites. All right, Nebraska Tanner, I'm ready for your question. Oh, no, hold on. This is going to be really good. <laughs> well, uh, oh, hold on. Let's have another I one, Tanner. I can't believe you didn't ask me about my keys. Hey, you got red stuff on your shirt. I don't think they let a horse and buggy in the showgrounds. All right, Michael, how do people find you on the internet? So you can find me on Twitter X at at Michael, M-I-C-H-A-E-L, don't misspell my name, underscore Bergen, B-E-R-G-E-N, don't underscan, don't, don't what? misspell understand. that, don't, don't Dude, underscore start that. over. Michael, M-A-C-H-A-E-L, M-A? underscore B-E-R-G-E-N, not A-N, I'm not a Bergeran, <laughs> not a Bergeriner, just a Bergen. Or you can find me on Instagram at Ultra Farmer. I don't know if you need to know why. Um, <laughs> Ultra Farmer on Instagram and uh, LinkedIn, Michael Bergen, and Facebook. Don't friend me there. I probably won't accept it. And Rick, where can oh. I find you? Snapchat. What's oh, Snapchat yeah, here. Snapchat. What's the new Maya website? <laughs> Maya America? Oh, dude, let's not go there. Maya America. MayaCornheads.com. Cornheads. Okay. All right. You All can right. find us there. Let's shut thank you guys. Thanks for the hospitality, hey, Michael, Rick, Maya Cornheads. Thank you. Crack a bush light. You deserve Please it. Please do. Let's go.